campus. This is Pastor Jennifer Pasquale in Rome, Italy, and I want you to know we are so happy that you are joining the service today. Wherever you are, whether you live in Italy or you live somewhere else, today you are spending some time with the Lord and he's got a word for you. We want to welcome our Bridge worship team from California as they lead us into worship. And I encourage you, stand up where you are, lift your hands, enter into the worship service. Just like we're having live worship on campus, you're having live worship with us online. And the Lord will meet you as you worship in his presence. Good morning, Bridge Church. We are so happy you've come to join us. If you please stand to your feet, we're going to worship our heavenly Father.
offering, Lord, I will remember what Calvary has bought for me, both now and Spoke your name into the night. 
Faith moves our giving. That's what you just did here in Rome. And I know all you all online, that's what you did. You logged in and gave of your offerings online today. God bless you for doing that. But I want to read our scripture verse of the month to you. It comes from Philippians chapter 4, verse number 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, a lot of times you only hear the end of that, that verse number 19. Many of you have heard that for years. My God's going to supply all your needs. But the verse 17 is the key here. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. And then he goes and says, my God's going to take care of you. As we study this uh, book and this, this area of scripture on the subject of giving, I've come up with my own theme for the month besides faith moves our giving is with the big question, how can I help you? So this month you're going to hear that. And today I'm going to break that down. How can I help you? It comes from the recap. I want to recap of, of last week just for a moment in case my live stream audience or maybe you weren't here with us last week. I believe that one of the biggest issues people have in their lives comes in the area of resources and finances. Some of our biggest problems that we face in our life and mountains and difficulties is in the area of finances or resources. Somehow that messes us up. And because sometimes when you are, are, are scrambling in that area, you don't make good choices. Sometimes you make uh, impromptu decisions. Uh, you, you buy things and you know you shouldn't have bought that. You spend some money on something and you overspent on that. And sometimes we don't think about long term. We just think about the moment. Well, I have five euro. Why not spend the five euro? Well, that's not my thinking, my thinking, or I believe it's God's thinking. I think sometimes you pause, you wait, you say, okay, what am I going to do with my five euro or my five dollars or whatever your uh, monetary system is in your country? But I believe that the key is understanding the principles of God's word in the subject of giving. It's not just what we get, it's how we give. It's out of our heart. It's, it's from our spirit man that says, I want to give. I want to be a, a generous person. See, God's system is not man's system. God's system says if you give, the windows of heaven are going to be open to you and you're going to get blessed. Man's system is hold, hold, hold. Rob, rob, rob. Steal, steal, steal. That's not God's system. God's system is, says if you'll give. And we taught you last week, 10% of your income should be given to the storehouse. The storehouse is the place that you see as your spiritual uh, place of, of guidance and direction. And you all know that here in Rome, that if you come to this church, we believe that. And on, the, on live stream, maybe you have another church. If that's your home, God bless you. And you do this as a, a secondary church. God bless you for doing that. But there's still seeds that you can sow into good fruit so that it abounds. You give and you watch how it abounds. So we use the Bible story from 2 Kings chapter 4. Verses number 1 through 7. I want to read that again. The wife of a man from the country of the prophets cried out to Elisha. That's the prophet. Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, my theme, how can I help you? Tell me. What do you have in your house? Your servant, her response was, your servant has nothing there at all except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. 
Then go inside, shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars. And as each is filled, put it to one side. So she left him, shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil, pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Now that's amazing how this all worked out. So here you got a lady. She was married to a godly man. And he dies. Unfortunately, there was some debt. Doesn't say where the debt came from. It just says there was some debt. And that the creditors were coming to take her only two boys in exchange for the debt. That was the customary procedure there. These two boys would have to be slaves unto this uh, creditor for seven years. That was the system then. Now, that's not a good system, but that was the system. And she was going to have to lose her two boys into slavery to this creditor for seven years. She didn't like that. There's not a person in this room that would like that. So she went to the man of God, the prophet, and said, Hey, (laughs) my husband died. You know that he died. And the creditors are coming to take my two boys. Now, This is a desperate woman. This is a woman that would do about anything to save her two boys. She wasn't going to just give up. She was going to do what she could do. And so she went to the man of God and and said, I need some help. She was saying it because she knew that she didn't want to lose her two sons. And the man of God's response was, how can I help you? (laughs) Now, to me, that's why I've played on this this terminology. Uh, Go back to the Italian because I I practice. Come posso aiutarle. I tried. But I can tell you this, whatever language you're like up there. (laughs) I can tell you, the question from the man of God is profound. The question I'm going to deal with today, how can I help you? And he responds to that question with another question. What do you have in your house? Now, nobody likes an answer to a question with another question. You know what I'm saying? Ask me another question, then another question. You, you kind of say, well, give me an answer. I want the answer to the question. How can I help you? And then he responds, what do you have in your house? He says, I have nothing except a small jar of oil. That's all I got. Now, I don't know if she's already sold everything she has in her house. I don't know. It doesn't say. But what she thought was of any value in her home was a small, small jar of olive oil. That's it. So today I put a few jars here symbolizing what's about to happen. Because from that moment, Elisha has a word. He says, Go and ask your neighbors for some jars. Now, remember she's desperate. Remember she's about to lose her two sons. Remember she doesn't have anything but a jar of oil. Now, and the response from the man of God is, go ask your neighbors for some jars. See, the man of God had already received from God what was going to be the answer to this situation. 
He didn't say, hey, by the way, I have the answer to your problem. Hey, by the way, the solution is about to happen in front of your eyes in the form of a miracle. By the way, it's just a few moments away that your boys won't be slaves anymore. By the way, in a few days, you're going to see the handiwork of God. He didn't make any of those kind of announcements. He simply said, go and ask your neighbors for some jars and don't ask for a few. Now, I don't know about you, but I would have had some follow-up questions with the man of God at that moment. What do you mean? What do you mean uh, just ask for some jars? Give me some more information. I mean, uh, when you think about it uh, from that situation and that question that the woman says to the man of God, uh, you know, I would be of the source. I would be of the person that would kind of want to follow up back. What are you meaning by this? Tell me what's about to happen. But this woman was so desperate, she didn't think about all those other kinds of things. She just thought, here's the man of God. He gave her some knowledge, gave her something to do, and this is what she's going to respond to today. Today, are you the person in need? Are you like this woman today? Or are you the person telling God that you're available? There's two kinds of people. The person that's in need today. And the person that's going to say to God, I'm available. You say, things are going good right now for you. In the middle of this pandemic, things are okay. I've kept my job. The income keeps coming in. Things are good. I'm asking you to be the person that says I'm available. For the person that maybe through this pandemic has lost a job or is in great need and things are happening. You're the person, like the woman today, that you could be asking the same question. You can say, God's about to help me. What can I do? Do you hear the difference? What can I do? If God's about to help me, what can I do? See, there's a lot of people in, in, in this world today that have gone through some difficulties. We, wouldn't, we would not be preaching a gospel message like this if we didn't realize there's, there's two sides to this story. It doesn't matter what country you're listening from today. There's difficulties going around the world today. Here in Rome, there's difficulties But I can tell you that God is in control of the situation. He just wants you to make yourself available to say, how can I help you? You're going to say that to God, and you're going to say that to those around you. For those that are in need, you're going to say to others, hey, I'm going to obey. I'm going to do what God's saying. Whatever God says, I will do that. See, some of you may be saying today, asking the question in yourself, Pastor, here's going to be my response. Will you pray for me? That may be your response. Some of you may say the response to that is, will you teach me what to do? Pastor, what, what should I do? You're asking for wisdom. Some of you may say, please, why don't you just give me the direction? I'll go do that. But I'm here to ask you the question today, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? This lady had one jar. That's all she had. But that was her response. I have one jar. She was being honest with the man of God. I have one jar. See, God is putting some of you in the place To ask the question, some of you today need the help of the prophet. Some of you are in that spot. See, there's two groups of people. And the ones in need and the ones about to be used by God. The one group of people is the ones that's in desperate need. And there's another group of people that God's about to use you to solve some problems. 
Now, I don't know which side you're on today. I don't know which position you're in today. But I can do you a teaching right now that says, I believe that if you're, today in this moment, if you're in the difficult situation, if you will put to practice God's principles, it's just a matter of time before you're on the other side. Did you hear what I just said? God's about to bless you if you've been faithful and you have done what God's asked you to do. God's about to bless you so that you can receive and then you can be the giver on the other side of the ball game. I don't know which side you're on today, but I can tell you that no matter what your situation, God's about to come through for you. See, 2 Kings chapter 2, chapter 4, verse number 2 says, Your servant has nothing. I think honesty is a key to success. Honesty is a key to the blessing. And I can tell you, 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 you might as well not even stop, start thinking about fooling God. He knows what you have. And he knows what you have need of. Did you hear what I just said? He knows what you have, and he knows what you have need of. She could have said to the man of God, man of God, I have nothing. I don't even have an empty jar. But the simplicity of her honesty today helps me to teach you and help to instruct you that be honest with God. I have a little bit of oil. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a desperate mama. I'm going to be honest with God. I'm in a desperate situation. And you've heard me say this line a million times. If you could fix your own problems, you would have already fixed them. You would have found the solution if you could do it. But there comes moments in our lives that we are so desperate. We've messed up. We've made wrong decisions. We've moved inadvertently. We shouldn't have done that. We shouldn't have done that. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves in a desperate moment of life. And the question is asked, how can I help you? And the answer is, <laughs> what do you got in your house? Some of you need to start looking at what you have and start honoring God with what you have. Some of you have a good job. Some of you have been faithful in giving of your tithes and your offerings. Some of you haven't learned that secret yet. But if you find yourself going backwards instead of forwards when you have the good job, it's, it's a time that you rearrange your priorities in your life. Your priorities is give to God and watch God do what he has promised to do. But my God shall supply all of your needs according to my riches in Christ Jesus. That's what he says. So if he says it, it is going to happen. And the response was, that's all I have. So my point number two today is prepare the house. Get this house prepared. Go around and ask all your neighbors. I mean, think about it. Here's the direction. A miracle's about to happen. You don't know a miracle's going to happen, but the man that God has showed up. Go ask your neighbors for some jars and don't ask for a few. Don't ask. I, I mean... <laughs> Right there, my brain is going crazy because I'm thinking, here this guy is telling me, I'm about to lose my two boys. The creditors have already started towards my house. And the man of God's response is, go ask for some jars. So the jar lady comes into being. She hadn't been a jar lady. She hadn't gone around and asked her neighbors, but I believe because her husband and her family revered the Lord is what the scripture says. They honored God. I believe in that little area of town, I believe that their neighbors saw them as godly people. I believe they saw that family as God-fearing people. I believe that as the man in the house was in the sons of the prophets. In other words, he, he hung out with the prophets. In other words, I believe those around saw, witnessed who this person was and who this family was. I wonder what people see you. How do they see you? What do they see of your life on your job, 
around your neighborhood? Do they see God-fearing people? Do they see people that honor the Lord? Do they people see people that have good things to say? Do they, they see people that have positive words that come out of their mouths? Do they see those kind of people? Do they see the person that loves God with all their heart? I believe there's two ways of looking at this. Or it could be the person that's always negative, always bad, always misappropriating funds, always not, not doing what God's asked. Not living the way God's asked you to live. And in your moments that you're desperate, you're saying, oh, I need God's help now. Listen, thank God God's a God of mercy and love and grace. Because I can tell you, there'd be times that if I saw your exhibition of negative and bad and worldly living, if I was the guy in charge, no, don't give them people no money. Because they've messed it up. How many chances do they need? But I'm not God. Are you listening to me? But I can tell you this. That God is a God that looks beyond your faults. Look beyond your mistakes. Look beyond your issues. Do you know what? There's still going to be a moment in your life when you finally come to your senses that I am the God that will supply all of your needs if you will just sow, if you will just obey, if you will just do what I'm asking you to do, you will find out that I'll take care of you. Now it's the God I want to serve. So the man of God shows up. I, I love the next part because my mind goes crazy with this illustration. That's why I've kind of moved the pulpit to the side today and had a few jars set up here. And by the way, if you have one of these type of jars and you want to bring it to me next week, it would just be for a loan. I won't take it. I'll just borrow it because I'd like to put a few more jars up here. I brought this little guy from my house today. It rolled around in the back of my car. My wife said, it's going to break. It's going to break. I said, no, it's not going to break. But I can tell you this. When she went to these neighbors and asked for a jar, I can see this lady as a desperate mama, knowing I'm running out of chances here. I'm running out of time here. So she went to neighbor number one, can I have some jars? Now, I don't know what the first lady brought out. She may have just brought out a medium-sized jar. She said, this is all I have. I'm sure this lady said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Grazie, grazie, grazie. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Whatever other language you got. But she was probably saying, look. I got one. I don't know what's about to happen with this one, but I got one. I only had one to start with. Now I got two. Are you hearing what, what's happening to this lady? I'm going to, I'm going to house number two. Can you imagine the two boys? I'm going to deal with the two boys next week. Can you imagine? They're young boys. Can you imagine their eyes? They, up till now, everything has been good. Their dad was alive. Family was good. Needs were taken care of. No, no issues. And then all of a sudden, here, my daddy's died. The source of income has stopped. What am I going to do? The boys are going with their mama because they, obviously they're a part of the story. They, they get to carry the jars. And I'm sure jar, big guy number one, son number one, saying to son number two, here, you carry the jar. We're going to number two. Two's house. They get to house number two, and house number two says, hey, I got a jar for you, lady. Because I'm sure in that little community, the word started spreading. Jar lady's coming. The jar lady's coming. You better get your jars out. And so the next house, it may have been a big old jar. And I'm telling you, when son number one sees that that jar is a big jar, I don't know why we need these jars, but that lady just gave me a big jar. And I, I can just picture the man of God sitting back there saying, huh, if they just do their job, 
There's going to be a miracle at the end of this story. Because <laughs> God's never failed. He's never, and never going to start with this family. There's always been a miracle at the end of the story. Ha! Ah, somebody listening to this message today. The lady was just doing what God had asked her to do. Go ask for some jars and don't ask for a few. House number three, house number four, house number five. And here are the jars. They start. That's why we need a lot more jars for next week. So y'all go find me some jars. I'm serious. Ship me some in from your country. Listen, some of you are hearing this message today and you're saying, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm that lady today. He's telling my story. I'm in a desperate situation right now. I don't know what I'm going to do. Can you listen to your pastor today? Hear the word of the Lord. What do you have in your house? Whatever that is, God's going to take care of it. And God's going to use that. In this particular story, he's going to use a little jar. She didn't know what was going to happen. But it's amazing what happened next. She gathers all the jars together. House number five, house number six. I, I, I can tell you, if I was one of her neighbors, I would not have closed my door and said I ain't got nothing. I would have been one of the neighbors. Is Even if I don't have something, I'm going to help. Are you listening? See, there's two sides of this. Remember, those that want in the position to do some help in here and those that are in the desperate situation. Some of you find yourself in the position today that you could be one of those helpers. Are you listening? If you're one of those helpers today, God's trying to speak to you. Lift up your eyes. There's some people around that need a little bit of help. Our church has been very kind and generous to meeting the needs. We had the most groceries given away last week than we've ever given away. Why? Because we realize there are some desperate situations going on. Why do you think the tithes and offerings in our church is so important? And the online giving is so important. We don't just hold it and keep it in a safe somewhere. We give it away. We help others. We take care of some needs. And this is the moment that when those bags of groceries are given away and there's prayer offered on their behalf, we know that that's going to turn around someday. It's just for this season that they need some groceries. The next season, they're going to be on the other side. They're the ones going to be contributors. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If you find yourself always the one trying to get, you're going to find out... <laughs> You're going to be in a desperate situation all of your life. Because if you just give a little, it's amazing what happens with a little. Some of you didn't even hear that. You just turn that off. If you give just a little, and some of that's all you have to give, God is going to bless that. So abundantly that you're going to say, where in the world did this miracle come from? The answer is always the same. It came from God. But my God shall supply. I can tell you, you don't want to miss next week. Because the lady is about to go into her house and she's about to close the door. The jars have been gathered. And there's going to be more up here next week, I can tell you, if i got to go out and find them myself. But I think somebody in this room is going to help me find some jars. We're going to find some jars, and we're going to show you a picture of this lady's room. As this lady comes in that room and does what the prophet says, she closes the door with her two boys. She doesn't know what's about to happen. The boy number one and boy number two, that they have not been given names in this story. Next week, I'm going to give them some names. Son one, son two, mom only. Show up into a room. The door is closed. And the man of God tells her to do something. I'm telling you, God always has a plan. 
to see the answer to your prayer. Do you hear what I just said? God always has a plan to the answer to your prayer. Don't miss your moments to hear from God. It could be the man of God. It could be God using me over this series to help teach you some things and put to practice some principles that will change your life for a lifetime. I can tell you, God has a never-ending supply. His oil supply is never going to run out. His blessing supply is never going to run out. And you may be the person in the desperate situation today, or you may be the person on the other side that's saying, man, I can still ask the question, how can I help? And some of you, I'm, listening, I'm looking right at you today. Some of you are in that position right now. You know you're in that position And you're not doing what God's asking you to do. You're just sitting there. Quit sitting there. Be a blessing. Here's your moment to be blessings to others. Be a blessing. Honor God. Obey God. Do what God says. And watch. You say, well, what if I've been holding on to it? What if I start giving away? You're going to get more. You're going to get more. And watch what God will do. Bible said in Malachi, as I read to you, don't look, see what God will do. See if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on you that you can't contain. See if I won't do that. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss next week's message. Online campuses, you don't want to miss. We're going to close the door and we're going to see what God's about to do. Today, you may have come to this message. You've come to this day in Rome. You've come online, and you say, man, I need some help. I'm going to pray that through this message, God has spoken to your heart. You say, how can, how can I help? What do I need to do? And I pray that God's going to tell you this is what you need to do and see the handiwork of God in your life. Would you stand with me here in Rome? God bless you for listening to me around the world. I know God has spoken to your heart today. God bless you. Heard this message. I be- Thank you so much for listening today. As you have heard this message, I believe God has spoken to your life. Today, the best decision you can make is to follow Christ, to say yes to Him. And if you want to say that prayer with me, I'd love to pray with you right now. So I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say it, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. From this day forward, for the rest of my life, I will live for you. The things I was doing that were sin, I won't do anymore because you've just changed my life. And I thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you just said that prayer, that's the best prayer you've ever prayed. And I can tell you that God's got great plans for your life. In a moment, there'll be some information that you'll see online that you can follow up because the relationship doesn't stop now. We've started a relationship where we're going to help you on this journey with Christ. Maybe you've listened to this prayer today and now you're saying, man, I got another need. Or maybe you've already given your life to Christ and you say, I need a miracle. Well, this pastor, this church believes in miracle. And so I wanna pray a prayer for you right now that God will do a miracle for you. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for my friends that have listened today. God, there's nothing too big for you. You said we can ask anything according to your will, and you hear us. And Lord, when you hear us, you respond to us. And Lord, right now, there are people that are praying prayers all over the world, and they're asking you for a miracle. So God, no matter what it is, I pray right now, you will touch them, you will answer their prayer, and a miracle will happen for them as we pray this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, I can tell you, I can't wait to hear the results of that prayer. So if you just send us a note, the information will be there right after you see this video. And you can say, I want to send that guy a note to tell him what God has done for my life. We love you. And remember, God's got a plan for your life.